Hello everyone, it's Caribbean E. Welcome to the channel. We trust that everybody just having a marvelous day and that you guys are in the best of health. I'm coming with an inspirational message today. Last week, I was talking about spiritual warfare and spiritual battles. It is such a good day today because we're actually in a castle, which is a fortress, a refuge in times of trouble. Europe has a history of castles, a legacy of defense mechanisms that they used back in the day to protect from the enemies. And I have been talking about spiritual warfare, Proverbs 1 and 7, which speaks about perilous times. Now I was looking at all these scriptures and these meanings and the warfare and perilous times and I came up with three scriptures together to see what we can come up with. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, is the beginning of everything you deal with as it relates to spiritual warfare and perilous times. But the Bible said, but fools despise wisdom and destruction. So now a fool is going into battle as a fool, which is very, very destructive. And it just leads to downfall. Hosea 4 and 6 says, For my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, because they have rejected knowledge, and also they have rejected how to fight. Now, spiritual warfare in perilous times is something you must stay on your feet on. You cannot sleep, you cannot nap, because when you get done reading 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 13, you're going to discover God is dealing with man as it relates to warfare. He's trying to help him, but sometimes we defeat ourselves. And our thinking sometimes is self-destructive. The economy right now, all over the world, is in a perilous state. People can barely afford eggs. People can barely pay their rent and their bills all over the place. So this scripture speaks of the condition of man's heart and his nature. So one must be dressed properly to be able to defend oneself in this time of conflict. And like I said the other day, the devil never takes a vacation. And if he doesn't take one, we shouldn't either. We should be dressed to fight with the armor of God that we may be able to stand in these evil times. Now the armor of God does not look like the garments of this world. The people that are dressed in God's armor are not concerned about what other people think about them. You're not worried about money and they're not worried about things that keep people up all night when they should be resting. Now you're not concerned with what other people drive, the cars that they have, because you're blessed with what you have. And you're not concerned about where other people live. You're satisfied in the house or apartment that you live in. Because sometimes in life, less is best. It's not how much money you make, I discovered years ago, but it's what you do with that money that will determine how you and the people around you see you. So there is no power in worry. It only empties you out of your peace. It takes away from your peace and tranquility, worry, fear, being troubled. So we have no defense against Satan's attacks and accusations if we try to battle him alone. God is letting us know in the text that you're not fighting this fight by yourself. But I'm with you in the battle. When Daniel got to the lion's den, he was not alone. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was in the fire, they were not alone. Sometimes God, my friends, won't take you out of the fire, but he gets in the fire with you to help you and to show you that you can make it you can survive, 
You can come out victoriously if God is in the house with you. So the devil's job is to attack the part of you that is weak. And the Bible says, be not weak in the faith, but be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. His job is to point out to you all of your failures. That's the devil's job is to belittle you and make you feel that you are not worthy or your self-worth. He will begin to attack. I noticed something about some of the trees that we're seeing now, the pines and uh, the desert, the cactus looking trees. They survive in every season because they're built to last, just like a Goodyear tire. We must be the same way if we're going to be successful in these perilous and tedious times. People are hungry, people are on the street. And the only way that we're going to get through this is with the help of God. So the enemy want to work on your character. He want to work on your self-worth. Make you feel you're not even worthy to get out of your bed in the morning. That's a lie from the pit of hell. His job is to keep you in the dump. His job is to remind you of disappointments that keep you from complete victory. So without God's strength, we are powerless and defeated, naked without protection. Now with God's instructions, you can fight the good fight of faith successfully, even if you're wounded. For the scripture says, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our nicotine, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, but with his stripes, we are healed. I want you to remember in this text today that you are more than a conqueror. As it states in Romans 8 and 28. And we know that all things work together for the good. I love this. It is so encouraging. We know that all things work together for the good for him that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. And my beloved, today you are called according to his purpose. Whether you feel like it, whether I don't care what it looks like, you are a chosen people called by God. Hell was not created for you, but it was created for the devil and his angels. So don't make that your permanent address. Make some changes now while you have time. So just like this tree here, that's been here for over a thousand years, God's word does not change. It is from generation to generation. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for spiritual warfare. We thank you for battles that make us strong. We pray, Lord, that you'll keep us in courage. Give us always to be dressed for battle. Though we're wounded and scarred, we pray, Lord, that you may give us the victory through our trials and tribulations until you return to this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. So, in the meantime, between the time, always remember that life is to be enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that subscription, notification, and thumbs up. And we'll see you on the next video. And may God bless you all.